Imagine this, a supply chain stretching like a vast river system. At the source, you have raw materials, the lifeblood of modern industries. Further downstream, these resources flow through factories and assembly lines until they finally reach the end consumer. But let's be clear, the real power lies upstream, at the source, not downstream at the retail level. History shows us that wars aren't waged over bakeries or packaged goods. They're fought over farmland, oil fields, and rare minerals. Ask any strategist, and they'll tell you. Control the resources, and you control the game. But what happens when this dominance is challenged? Take oil, for example. Nations have risked everything to secure oil fields, sending entire armies across borders. Why? Because without crude oil, refineries and gas stations are meaningless. The same principle applies to water rights, fishing grounds, and today's increasingly critical rare earth minerals. It's a power dynamic as old as civilization, and right now, China sits at the top of this hierarchy, dominating the production of many essential materials. This is why attempts to impose sanctions on resource-rich nations often fail. And it's not just about geopolitical maneuvering. It's about how this affects you, the consumer. Consider the ongoing sanctions against Russia. Despite sweeping restrictions, Russia's natural resource exports remain a lifeline to its economy. Similarly, the chip war against China has encountered significant hurdles. The United States imposed restrictions to limit China's access to advanced semiconductor chips, targeting companies like Huawei. But here's the challenge. Sanctions address only one part of the supply chain, the final products, while ignoring the raw materials required to create them. And therein lies the problem. China dominates those materials. Now think about this. How does this impact the cost of your next smartphone or electric car? Gallium is a perfect example. Until recently, most people had never even heard of this rare metal. But for those in the know, gallium's importance is undeniable. It's a critical component in producing gallium nitride, a material indispensable for telecommunications and advanced semiconductors. Following U.S. restrictions on semiconductor technology, China retaliated by banning exports of gallium. This move sent shockwaves through global industries, as China controls an estimated 95 to 98 percent of the world's gallium supply. What does this mean for innovation and global competition? Why does this matter? Gallium nitride offers unparalleled advantages in telecommunications, particularly for 5G infrastructure. Huawei, a primary target of U.S. chip sanctions, leverages gallium nitride to produce 5G equipment that is lighter, more efficient, and less costly to deploy than its competitors' products. For instance, Huawei's equipment requires fewer cooling systems and lighter poles, reducing installation and maintenance costs. This directly impacts the affordability of 5G networks and, by extension, consumer access to high-speed Internet. Ericsson and Nokia, by contrast, struggle to match these efficiencies, giving Huawei a commanding lead in the global market. The Pentagon's response underscores the complexity of the issue. Despite public calls to eliminate Huawei equipment from U.S. communication networks, the Department of Defense has repeatedly sought waivers to delay compliance with these directives. The reason? Huawei's technology is often irreplaceable, and alternatives are either too costly or less effective. In 5G telecommunications, Huawei is now a generation ahead of its competitors, thanks in large part to its access to gallium and its advanced engineering. But the real question is, can the U.S. afford to fall behind in such a critical industry? But the implications extend far beyond telecommunications. Gallium is vital in power management, renewable energy, autonomous vehicles, and defense systems. A 2021 White House report identified gallium as a critical material for U.S. supply chains, 
stressing its importance across industries. The report mentioned gallium 14 times, highlighting vulnerabilities in sectors ranging from semiconductors to clean energy. Meanwhile, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, estimated that a 30% disruption in the global gallium supply could cost the U.S. economy $62 billion annually, with cascading effects on industrial production and national security. Imagine the ripple effects on everyday technology, from the reliability of electric vehicles to the cost of energy-efficient appliances. China's dominance in gallium is closely tied to its leadership in aluminum production, where gallium is often a byproduct. Decades of strategic investment have propelled China to produce over half of the world's aluminum, and this advantage extends to gallium. Charts comparing China's gallium output to the rest of the world resemble a vertical spike, with China towering over every other nation. For raw gallium, CSIS estimates that China's share exceeds 98% leaving the U.S. and its allies heavily reliant on Chinese exports. How did we get to this point? And more importantly, how do we move forward? This dependency has profound implications for key industries. For example, semiconductors, which are foundational to everything from smartphones to fighter jets, rely on gallium wafers for advanced chip production. Without a stable gallium supply, manufacturers face significant bottlenecks, jeopardizing innovation and competitiveness. Similarly, renewable energy technologies, including solar panels and wind turbines, require gallium-based components for efficiency and durability. Could this reliance slow the transition to cleaner energy? Huawei's intellectual property portfolio further amplifies the challenge. The company holds over 2,000 patents related to gallium technology, solidifying its leadership in this space. American companies, by contrast, lag behind in both access to raw materials and technological advancements. This disparity raises critical questions. How can the United States compete when its supply chains are so heavily dependent on a rival nation? And what are the long-term consequences of this imbalance for global technology leadership? But perhaps the most pressing question is, what happens if China tightens its grip even further? The United States government's approach to the chip war highlights a disconnect between policy and reality. Restricting chip exports to China without addressing vulnerabilities in raw material supply chains is akin to cutting off a river's downstream flow while ignoring the upstream source. Did policymakers underestimate China's ability to leverage its resource dominance? Or did they assume that China would not retaliate? The answers could redefine the strategic landscape for decades. When China banned exports of rare earth metals and other critical materials, it exposed the fragility of Western supply chains. This tit-for-tat strategy underscores a fundamental truth. Controlling raw materials gives nations unparalleled leverage. If the United States tells China, we won't sell you advanced chips, China can respond by withholding the raw materials needed to make those chips in the first place. It's a strategic countermeasure that shifts the balance of power. And the repercussions? They extend far beyond geopolitics, potentially reshaping industries and consumer markets worldwide. A 2023 CSIS report reinforced these concerns, noting that China's dominance in materials like gallium and rare earths poses insurmountable challenges for Western industries. The report's findings align with earlier assessments, including the 2021 White House report, both of which emphasize the need for diversified supply chains and increased domestic production. Yet progress has been slow. Establishing alternative sources for materials like gallium requires years of investment, technological development, and infrastructure building. In the meantime, China's dominance remains unchallenged. Could this delay irreparably harm United States technological progress? So, where does this leave us? 
The chip war has illuminated a critical vulnerability in global supply chains, the reliance on a single nation for essential materials. As nations grapple with this reality, the question becomes not just how to compete, but how to innovate in a world where resource control increasingly dictates technological and economic power. The stakes are high, and the consequences of inaction are even higher. But perhaps the most pressing question of all is, are we prepared for what comes next? We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.